Yo, what's going on, my dudes? Welcome to a brand new video on Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. My name is Vinicius SG, and I hope you guys are having a super cool, wonderful, awesome, powerful Super Saiyan day. In this video, we're going to be continuing our discussion on what changes need to be made from Xenoverse 2 to Xenoverse 3 to make Xenoverse 3 the perfect game that we're going to want to play forever and ever and ever. The last two videos, the top five things that we want to change or add to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 has done really well in the channel. You guys have shown a lot of support to that, so we're just going to continue the discussion. So in this video, we're going to talk about the top five things that need to change like stuff that we want to take out uh things that we want to make better to make xenoverse 3 just super off the chain all right let's get right into it Alright, so the first thing that I would change from a Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 to a Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3 is something that is 100% on my list, but it's probably not going to be on your list, so I'll go ahead and drop that in at number 5, and it is... Alright, alright, I get it, I know what you're saying, bro, leave the perfect blocks alone, you're just trash at Xenoverse 2, that's why you want to take perfect blocks away. No, I do not want to take perfect blocks away, and yeah, I do know how to perfect block, I just don't like to do perfect blocks a whole lot, because when I play Xenoverse, my whole strategy for playing Xenoverse is not a block encounter, my whole strategy for Xenoverse is different, I like to dodge encounter rather than block encounter, I don't like the blocking, I think blocking, well that's just my opinion, I don't like the blocking in Dragon Ball Xenoverse as a game specifically. Um... But I wouldn't take out perfect blocking completely because I know a lot of people love perfect blocking. The thing I dislike about perfect blocking in this game is that it does a little bit too much. You perfect block somebody, you give them a little bit of a knockback, and then you get to go ahead and attack them. At the same time, you give them a little bit of a knockback, and you take away a bar of their stamina. So I think, it, to me, that's sort of unfair when you're playing somebody who's good, like the guy I'm playing right now in this clip. He's really, really good. So it might take a little bit of time for me, a player that's not as good as him, to finesse his stamina away from him. So when I do finesse his stamina away from him, he's got like maybe one bar left. I've got one bar left. And all I need to do is hit him one time. And he maybe is spamming the L1 button. Like not even perfect blocking on time. But spamming the button so that if I'm attacking him. He will eventually get that perfect block at some point in time. And then boom. There goes a bar of my stamina. I am now stamina broken. And now the battle is like in his favor. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> Alright, so this one might be a pretty tough pill to swallow for some people. Now, I'm not saying take away all microtransactions, because I see where microtransactions for this game is a good thing. Alright, a nice, easy, quick shortcut. But what I really admired about Xenoverse 1 and Xenoverse 2 for the most part was that it didn't give in to the microtransactions, that this game was good enough on its own to be the moneymaker. Now, when they added in the new Colosseum game mode, now that's where I thought that, okay, yeah, transactions, microtransactions, buying your, you know, currency or whatever like that would be a really, really cool thing to do because people want to play this sort of Dokkan battle sort of thing on the console. And that, to me, is a really good idea. I think that if Xenoverse 3 is a thing, that they should 100% keep up the Hero Coliseum, and I would even ramp up the Hero Coliseum a little bit more, maybe make it a little bit different, maybe make it exactly like Dokkan, I mean, can they do that? I mean, Bandai Namco, Dragon Ball, they're all sort of the same thing, I guess, I don't know, if I would do it, I would make the Hero Coliseum exactly like Dokkan Battle, and try to ride on the fame, and just the uh, enjoyment of whatever that Dokkan Battle has going on right now, to sort of maybe replace the Dokkan Battle, or maybe just, like I said, make a Dokkan Battle for the console, because I know there are a lot of kids out there who enjoy playing Dokkan Battle, and they don't have enough money to spend on stones all the time. I, I, I'm not going to pretend to know a whole lot about Dokkan Battle, because I've only played the game like one time, and I just, I'm just the type of person that I don't really want to play a game on my phone when I have a PC, I have a console, I have a Switch, you know, I don't, I don't, I can't see playing a game on my phone, unless I'm like at school or, or, you know, on a road trip somewhere, which I'm never going to be these things, you know, so, um, definitely, it would be cool to have a game like Dokkan Battle, but be able to get your currency through playing the actual game and then if you don't have enough time or you don't want to waste the time you could go ahead and yeah buy the currency so definitely in this situation i would have currency as like a a side option that you don't necessarily have to do it and that getting the currency that you would get with buying it through the game is not like od difficult to get so like if you wanted to go get tp medals you wouldn't have to grind 
freaking the extra mission 99 times just to get 100 TP medals. I think that that TP medal should come a little bit easier. Not a whole lot easier because you don't want to like defeat the purpose of having the microtransactions in the game, but give it a little bit easier. You know, give more um, TP medals through different things, I guess. Doing parallel quests, give you like maybe 5 or 10 TP medals. Doing some PvP matches, give you some more P TP medals and stuff like that. Because I know when the whole TP medal thing was announced, the Hero Coliseum thing was announced, through leveling up characters, I literally had like 5,000 TP medals. I had accumulated them through playing the game, and I don't even know how I got them just through all these different things. Because after I bought all the stuff I needed to buy through the um, the shop or whatever like that, I still had all these TP medals left over, and I kept getting TP medals. So definitely um, keep in the microtransactions, but maybe dumb them down just a little bit. Make them as like a side thing for people who just don't want to waste the time and make it to where you don't necessarily have to have microtransactions. Well, I mean, you don't have to have them anyway, but you don't have to, like, use them to make it a quick and easy path, you know? Just make it, like, an extra side option for the people who just don't want to spend, like, the smallest amount of time playing the game. I think maybe in, like, an hour of just playing the game, you should have enough TP medals to do what you want. And then being able to buy the TP medals should be an option for the people who either don't have an hour to play the game or don't want to spend that hour playing the game to get what they want. You see what I'm saying? This is something that I really wanted to put on the list, and maybe it should have been number four, but this actually means a lot to me, and I know there are a lot of you out there who feel the exact same way that I do about Limit Burst. Limit Burst was not included in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1, and it wasn't even invited or included in the original, you know, build of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. It's something that they just recently add. For what reason, I have zero clue about. I don't know why they added Limit Burst. I don't know, you know, what the idea about it. I, mean, I just can't get my head around the idea idea of limit burst um let me set up the stage for you you're playing in a match against a person like the guy that i'm playing in this clip now who is really really good at dragon ball Universe. he's even better than you are all right now for whatever reason you are playing this guy and he gets caught slipping like he gets caught slipping i mean we're not talking about people that are just trash at the game that aren't good that you're better than we're talking about somebody that you're playing that is actually better than you at the game okay and then you for whatever reason through you're playing them a lot or maybe your own ability has just leveled up within that match and you've just gained greater knowledge on how to play xenoverse what happens when you have this person super finessed and there's nothing they can do about it all right when there wasn't a limit burst and you had them with their stamina down and you're about to stamina break them and potentially win the game, you were going to win the game before limit burst was added, right? Well, wrong. This time with limit burst, you have that person who you were about to mollywop 100% completely. They now have an option to limit burst and get themselves out of that situation. Now, I know you can limit burst right back on them. But I just think that the inclusion of Limit Burst in a whole, because I don't want to use Limit Burst. I think it's cheesy. I think it means that I need some extra help to win. And I don't really, if I, if I can't beat a person on my own merit, then I don't, I don't want the W. You know, I don't want the game to help me to beat them. I know there are some cheesy things that you can do in the game to guarantee you the W. And for the most part, I do do some of those, some things like fake blasts and stuff like that. But, um, nah, I just, I don't think Limit Burst is a really good thing. I think that if they are going to keep a Limit Burst on, maybe make it to where you can't limit burst uh while you're being attacked you know maybe make it to where you can't limit burst if you don't have any stamina or maybe you have to have a certain amount of stamina to limit burst something like that maybe make some just make some changes to limit burst to make it to where it's not this sort of oh well you're about to kill me and i'm gonna limit burst and knock you back off of me and then take over the match and oh look now i have the ability to not get hit i have the ability to gain all of my health back you know i think that they should definitely either take it out nerf it 100 percent completely or only make it to where you can use limit burst inside of pve things such as raids or or maybe parallel quests or maybe if you want to keep it in there give it an option on the pvp menu which i think that would be kind of od with the options because not a whole lot of people play the xenoverse game and if you have all these different parameters you're not really going to have enough people to to play the game so maybe if you're doing like a custom match between your friends or something like that you can take it off but even if you are playing with your friends and you have to go to that extra step to take off limit burst if you tell them no don't limit burst and they still do it they're they're not your friends and they don't have your best interest at heart so i don't know i i think that limit bursting 
is definitely a negative on the game, and I definitely would not keep it in the game, like, at all, because limit bursting just, honestly, it sucks for me. It really does. <laughs> Okay, so I think this is one thing that we can all agree on. More options when it comes to PvP matchmaking. And I'm talking specifically about the option to add in the decision whether or not you want to fight against cast characters or you want to fight against CAC characters. Because I like cast characters in this game and there are some people who are like, cast characters are stupid. This is a game about creating your own character and using time controllers. And you know, I feel that, but at the same time, they're making all these cast characters for us to use for a reason. This is still a Dragon Ball game. If you take away the whole aspect of Time Patroller, what would you have? Cast characters. When Dragon Ball Fighters came out, the people that were playing Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 that hopped on Dragon Ball Fighters, they had no problem with using cast characters because that's all there was to use. And I feel the same way about this game. I mean, I think it's cool that you can make your own character in Xenoverse 2. But I also think it's cool that I can use Yamcha, that I can use Raditz, that I can use Turles. And I want to have a game mode in Xenoverse 3 where I have a really big confidence that if I choose to use a character like Turles in a PvP match that I randomly set up, that I won't run into a male human earthling with perfect shot and fake death that's going to cheese me to death, you know? I think the, the really cool thing about using cast characters and fighting with cast characters is that you know exactly what you're going to get when you fight against this cast character. So let's just say... I am using Gogeta, Super Saiyan Gogeta, and then I come across a hit. I know what hit is going to do. I know what he is capable of, you know? And talking about that, I think that it is cool that they did add in at the end here of Xenoverse 2 the ability to change around some of the cast character moves. I think that's a fantastic idea, and I think that would be a perfect medium, an in-between ground for us to meet if they keep that in there, but change that, like in Xenoverse 3, like make that OD. Give us more options to change the cast characters. Not so much, keep it limited, but give us more options than they have now. Because I think there are only maybe five or six different moves that you can give each cast character when you go and change them or something like that. Give us maybe eight, nine, ten different moves that you can change around, you know. Um, but for the most part, though, if I'm playing with cast characters, if I'm using Baby or, or Broly or Frieza, I don't want to come against your male human CAC with you're on your super tryhard, I gotta win, so I'm gonna spam every cheesy thing, you know. I don't want to deal with that when I want to play with cast characters, you know. I think that having a mode where people are like-minded would be great. You know, I like using Zamasu. You know, Zamasu is a really cool character. I like using Kaba. And unfortunately, Kaba, with the ability that I'm at, as in skill level, if I come across somebody who's just OD with their male human earthling, there's nothing I can do about it with Kaba. Kaba is just going to get destroyed because his moves drop out a lot of the time. His combos don't connect. It's just a really bad character. But I like Kaba, so I want to use Kaba in the game. So I think that give us options to where it can be like, Cast character only, CAC only, or both. What do you think about that? Alright, so I put this at number one because I think everybody in the Dragon Ball Xenoverse community can come to the agreement on this one thing. That it is super duper 100% irritating to where if I have my first character in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 and I can beat the game, I've unlocked everything, I've used the Dragon Ball to wish for the dragons, to wish for hit and get all these other characters, that when I go to create another character, I now have to do every parallel quest over again. I have to go and talk to the PC NPCs around Kanton City to get this character, to get this mission, to do this character. Get I do all that over again, and that actually sucks. That actually sucks. It makes it to where that I almost don't want to make a second character because if I have this second character, I don't get to PvP in the same way. Not saying that my character is going to be limited in any way, but if I do PvP on this character, now if I don't want to use my CAC when I'm PvPing with my friends and use a cast character, I can't do that. And I have to do this thing, well hold on, I don't have the characters unlocked on this account, I have to go and switch. Or I can't tell you how many times I've been on a stream where I've been having so much fun playing with my subscribers and we're doing these themed battles and it's like, okay, by now everybody should have all the characters unlocked. Let's do a Saiyan themed character. And then this one person can't do it. They're like, oh man, I'm on this CAC and I don't have Turles unlocked on this CAC. My bad. I gotta switch characters. You know, and that kind of sucks. It's a very big inconvenience. Not saying that it's a 100% game breaker, but I think that in Xenoverse 3, 
that needs to change. We all thought that in Xenoverse 1 to Xenoverse 2 that they were going to fix that. That they were going to have it to where we have everything unlocked. I mean, if I'm using my other characters, I get it that if I'm using a male human, the story is going to be different if I'm going to be using a Mechian. So, I guess I can see where the story mode should be the same, but just for the story mode. Keep the story mode the way it is, we have to complete the story mode again if we're using a brand new character because they're a brand new time controller. But if you're going to have it to where the moves are not unlockable, like look at that. This is a, this is my main character right here. I have all the moves on my main character. If I go to another character, those moves are still going to be grayed out because I have those moves. So if you're going to keep it to where I have all these things unlocked on this character and then everything is going to be also unlocked like the moves and stuff like that for another character. I think all the unlocks should be available under the character. All the expert missions should maybe be unlocked. Maybe not the expert missions because if you try to go the expert mission with your one character, it's going to be kind of jank. But then again, that helps with power leveling with your character because I can't tell you how many times I've said, hey man, look, I need your help. Can you help me level this character up? Can you do expert mission whatever for me and then just power level me and i think that definitely needs to stay don't change that at all do not change the whole power leveling please do not because if you do that no one's going to make any new characters like at all we're all just going to be stuck on one character i mean sure there are going to be some tryhards that keep their same character or that change characters and stuff like that because they love playing the game and stuff but for for us people that really really are enthusiasts about the game that don't want to go through all of that rigmarole again don't do it. Keep that the same. Keep it to where we can do extra mission 15 or 16 or 20 if we are still just level 1 because that gives us incentive to start new characters. I mean, especially in the face of everything else has to be unlocked. I mean, because if that wasn't a thing, I probably wouldn't make a new character. I would rather just get the Dragon Balls and do a new chance at life or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't know what I would do, but it would really suck to have to change, um, to have to unlock everything as well as you know build my character up from the bottom you know i don't know maybe in this day and age we're all lazy but i just don't see the point in starting over if i've already done it like i said it's okay if it's a different race of character the storyline and stuff is going to be different but if i just want to make another male saiyan because i felt like i messed up on my male saiyan and the story is going to be exactly the same i don't want to 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 go through it again you know i don't know so that is my top five, and I'm just show you right here. This is my Gohan character. I'm just going to show you how. I mean, you all know it. Isn't it ridiculous? I am still me. Like, there is not somebody else controlling this account. This is still my PSN ID, and I don't have all the characters unlocked. So that means I got to go collect all the Dragon Balls again, all those many times to unlock all these characters. And really, the only character that I want unlocked is Hit. I want to keep Hit. And, you know, I have to go and do all that stuff. I, I just don't think that's cool. I think that if I unlocked it on my main character, every character that I make after that should have everything unlocked. Not necessarily story mode should be done, but everything should be unlocked. All the characters and stuff like that. All right, so that's going to be it. That is my top five list of things that I would change in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 to Dragon Ball Xenoverse 3. Let me know what your thoughts about these things are are in the comments below if you think that something should have been higher on the list or something should have been lower on the list definitely let me know that down in the comments too if you think something should be on the list at all let me know that too and then defend your answer i want to read everything that you have to say in the comments below because we are we're interested in trying to make a better xenoverse 3 game if it does become a game and at this point some people are saying it might not be a game but xenoverse 2 and xenoverse 1 were so widely successful i do, I, I just, it's inconceivable that they won't make a Xenoverse 3. I don't see why they, they would. All right. So, uh, thank you guys so very much for watching this video. I appreciate all the recent support on these top five videos. Uh, and just thank you, man. Just, I, I would just ask you to keep it up and just have a great rest of your day. Continue having fun playing Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 while we still can. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.